Hello, in this video we will look at the basics of sculpting in Blender. So I'm going to go ahead and add the multi-res modifier by going to add modifier and multi-resolution as we saw in the last video. And just like the last video, I'm just going to go ahead and subdivide it about three times. Now I'm just going to go ahead and smooth it out by pressing smooth so that I don't see those lines. I like to look at a smooth object when I sculpt. Now to go into sculpt mode, we change from the object mode to sculpt mode. So now we can sculpt our object. To sculpt our object, we would need to work with brushes. Now, first of all, before we go ahead and look at brushes, it's sort of best to visualize sculpting in a real world scenario. When you are sculpting in Blender or any other 3D software for that matter, it's always best to visualize your 3D object as a sort of clay model. Remember those uh, pottery classes or those clay modeling classes that you would have probably done in school? You can sort of imagine it's just as that. So you can imagine that this blob here is a, a blob of clay. And the brushes you work with are, are the sort of like the clay modeling techniques that you would use. For example, I tend to use the blob and sculpt draw brushes. So what this does, so if I left click that, I can pretty much draw on my 3D model. You can sort of visualize it as you are sticking clay on top of your blob. You're, you're adding more clay on top of your blob. You can either add or you can subtract it, so you can take that clay away. So as an artist, we have a lot of control how we want our 3D model to look. The clay also does that as well, uh, but it's more of a paint motion. You have to left click drag just to see anything happening. Whereas the other one, you just pretty much draw on or stick on. Whereas clay is sort of slowly building up a form on your 3D model. The next brush is crease. You can sort of visualize this as taking two of your fingers and sort of pinching your um, models together. So just like pinching them together. Uh, you can also use a pinch magnifier to do a similar thing. And that's sort of like pinching. Uh, this is used to uh, create contours and edges for your 3D objects. Um, smooth. Well, it's, this one's pretty obvious, it just smooths out everything out. So you can sort of imagine that as if it was like um, like sandpaper a little bit. It just smooths out your object and makes it look uh, less sharp. Flatten contrast, this flattens out your model. So wherever you paint, it just makes it like a flat piece of land. A snake hook, um, you can sort of imagine as if you are sort of forcing a tail to grow out of your object or ears. So I've, I've just made two two rabbit looking ears there and obviously it's not very good resolution because uh, there's not enough vertex data I'm basically only putting a few vertices there so as we said sculpt mode is basically working with existing vertex data so it's just like pushing and pulling vertices except you're using brushes to do that now uh, the grab brush also a very popular brush you basically take a part of the, your three object and just grab it out whereas in the edit mode world it's like selecting a few vertices and just pressing G and moving them around. Yet we also get a few other vertices that come around with it. Just a few more concepts. I think I'm making a cat here. It looks like a cat. The radius, this is the size of your brush. So if I left click drag left or right, I can control how big I want my brush to be or how small I want my brush to be. Um, you can do the same thing also by pressing the shortcut key F. So press the F key and you can uh, Move your mouse up and down to control the size and then left click once you're happy with that size. The strength, this controls how intense you want the effect of the grab or, or any other brush to be um, or how subtle you want it to be. So one is, is, a, is that it's full intensity, so grab the vertice, so just grab any part of the model where, wherever you select it. But if I make it very low strength, uh, like 0.1, the effect is not as strong, it's very subtle. It, so it helps the subtle artist more. And when you're working with very detailed models, like character models, you probably want to keep it more subtle. Another brush that I also tend to use is the Inflate Deflate. You can sort of imagine an Inflate Deflate as your clay model pretending to be a balloon. So if you want to inflate, your balloon pops out like that. And if you deflate, your balloon um, well, deflates. All right, moving along. Let's just change the brush to, let's say, the draw brush and change the size uh, to a smaller size by pressing F. Uh, you will notice as I painted, or as I, well, let's add, 
You may have noticed while I was sculpting that my changes were reflected on the opposite side of the model. So it was mirroring everything I was doing. And that's because we have this symmetry enabled on the x-axis. So wherever I paint here, it's copying it over to the other side of the x-axis. So if I turn that off, you won't see that mirroring effect anymore. And I can paint wherever I want and not see that change being reflected here. By default, it's always kept on. Um, I think the main reason for this is Blender assumes you are going to sculpt a face or a human body as you know they tend to be quite symmetrical. So when you sculpt, for example, say one eye, uh, it knows that it will save you twice the time so that um, you know your modeling can be done a lot more efficiently and a lot more quickly. By modeling a very detailed eye here, you pretty much have a detailed eye on the other side as well. Same with the mouth, same with the nose, same with the hands, the body, the legs and so on. So it's a very handy feature uh, to have the sculpt mode there. Another one is the curve uh, tool. This is uh, a bit more adv for advanced sculptors. Uh, this basically uh, controls the fall off of your brush. So if I just uh, increase the size of this, say F like that, and just keep it, uh, just, let's just keep it at F like that. Uh, let's rotate this way, okay, F. You can see that this curve, the, the current selected curve we have, is giving a fall off like that. So some of the sculpting, a lot of the sculpting is done in the middle uh, and tends to fall off around about the edges. If I select something like, say, this one here, the fall off is uh, sharply in the middle. And it, it falls off, so if I press F, you can see the effect in action. So most of the sculpting is done right in the middle and it falls off pretty much immediately. At this one, uh, straight line, I press F, the sculpting mode takes equal effect everywhere according to the size of your brush. You don't have to rely on this curve to be a fall of controller, you can also use a texture. So textures are pretty cool, so for example if you have a lizard skin texture, you can literally paint a lizard skin on top of your model. So you can make our, our cat looking head have lizard skin, which is quite possible. You just have to make the strength very subtle and uh, the detail of your model bumped up a lot higher. You can literally paint lizard skin on your 3D model. Not only lizard skin, you can, you can paint rocky textures, you can paint um, you know, alien-like uh, skin, I don't know, there's, there's a whole variety of different things you can, you can paint with using textures. And that also helps to improve your photorealism as well. When you use real textures to help create uh, the real bumps of your 3D model. It adds more detail to your 3D model and it just looks a whole lot better when it's rendered. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. In the next video we will look at dynamic sculpting in Blender.